All right. I guess it's 145. Uh, I'll get started. Okay. Right, I forgot to introduce myself. Um, so I recently graduated from uh, this, uh, this spring semester, and I currently work as a uh, research assistant at UConn Health, working on um, osteoarthritic pain management. Uh, so you may be wondering, like, what does that have to do with hockey analytics? The answer is it doesn't. Um, but I, I have like a very strong background with data analytics, and I don't know how a hockey enthusiast, I would say. Like, you guys probably want more hockey than I would, but I don't know. I know my way around hockey. Um, but before I begin, I just want to know, like, you guys, like, I just want to know, like, the skill level here. Who here knows what an API is? Okay, cool. You know what API is? Yes. All right, cool. Uh, that's fine. Uh, how, who here knows, like, NumPy? Pandas, not by pandas. Right. I know you know that stuff at this point. How about you? Like, are you? Do you, do you guys know Python in general? Okay. Well, I apologize. This is very non pandas heavy. Um, I I can't teach those things in this workshop. Um, but I hope to give you at least like an intuition of like how non pandas works and like what you can do with it. Um, and like once you don't know about pandas, you can just come back to this presentation and just run through it on your own. Um, so speaking of hockey analytics, well, just a little history on hockey analytics. It's a very new field, which is a shocker to me. Uh, like it probably started like in 2008, so it's like 14 years old. And since it's very new, there's not a lot of like readily available software packages that you could use. Um, do your analytics. So, like for us poor programmers, what we have to do is just run through the entire data science pipeline. So we have to like gather our data ourselves. Oh, whoops. We have to gather our data ourselves. Wait, did it stop? stop? Oh, my bad. All right. So we have to gather our data ourselves. We have to clean it, organize it ourselves, and then we have to like run our own analysis. Um, ourselves, but, but that's fine. I mean, that's most data science projects. So today's workshop, like we're going to run through the data science pipeline and for hockey analytics. We're going to first start skating using the Rust package in Python, and we're going to manipulate it so it, it has what we want with uh, non prime pandas and software. Um, and I think the final visualizations are pretty cool. Uh, I, I, I think you guys would like them too. Um, so yeah, so the objective for like this workshop is to visualize um, shot and goal events. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically like anytime someone takes a shot or anytime someone scores a goal, like like the people recording the game basically like jot down like all the details, like oh this player shot the puck from this corner on the field, and. Uh, using this team that I've heard of this time and all that stuff. So we're basically going to use that data and then run some analytics on, like we're gonna run players on who has the best average scoring, um, like where do players tend to shoot from on the field? Um, where do uh, teams like have like blind spots and defenses, et cetera. Um, but right. But to do that, we need a data source. And I'm going to use NHL data for this, so I'll just keep that in mind. But there's a bunch of variety, but there's a bunch of other data sources you can use. There's the Big Data Cup, which is like a national women's hockey analytics competition, and they have like very good data sources that you could use for women's hockey uh, stuff. Kaggle is like a company owned by Google that has a bunch of good data sources on basically anything. You can just go to Kaggle and type in like hockey stuff. And you get a bunch of the uh, sources. And then those two, um, the CHL, like the stats, NHL, the hockey counts. Um, they're also good data sources. They give you like play by play data, they give you like statistics and stuff. But unfortunately, we need a subscription to use those um, services. So keep that in mind. But 
Today we're going to use um, we're going to get initial data straight from the source, which is from the image that we got. Um, right. So I think I think we'll have you like probably only two of you know what an API is. Do you want to describe what an API is? Like I just give you a best shot, like in one sentence, what would you say an API is? It's like a connection used to get data from a database. Yeah, that's actually very good. I was gonna say it's it's a connection to a magic portal, but you know, a database. <laughs> database is a better word to use. But yeah, it's that's it's that's it's what you said. It's like there, there's a computer out there with the information that you want, and an API is basically a way for you to get that information. So believe it or not, right? If you want like if you want if like this is crazy to me, but you see that link up there, the HTTP slash stats API web whatever, that link is the API. So if you take that link and then put it in your Chrome browser, so like right here, it gives you all the information that you want here. One second, let me close this up. Um, but first let me like describe what this API is. So it's a link, right? Like in order for this stuff to work, you need something called the data ID. It throws like 10 numbers over there. Um, and the 10 numbers is like this is three parts, one is the four, second is the senior. Senior is like one, two, three. One is like three senior, one, two is regular senior, one is three, whatever. And then the game number is like the order of them. So zero, 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 one is the first thing the regular season. Zero, 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 two is the second thing the regular season, and so on. So basically, you put in that number for and then you can go onto your and you can go into any browser and then just like hit enter and it gives you like a crap ton of information um like it's, it's so much information like if you look on if you look at the scroll on the side like it barely move it's so much information how we're going to analyze this we'll get to that later uh but the first part is like you want to get this information into python right you want to you want to you know, create all these links and then basically you do like a Google search for them. It, it, it depends, it's called a replica. It's a data science logo. And how you do a get request in Python is like pretty simple. You import the request package. Um, I'm just setting up all the variables. And then all you do is like, you the browser, you just copy and paste it into the blog which I'll set up. It's basically, it's like, I think it's the same thing by uh, using this replica, so the request by going is replica. And this timeout is um, just like if, just like you wait five seconds and nothing comes back to you, just like a board. Um, and it's just, it just makes things go faster. But basically, this is just a function where I run through all the different game IDs and then it, it gets all the data, that huge like chunk of data, and then appends it. And then what I'll do is um, I'll append it to this game data list. Um, this is totally unnecessary, but right here I have 2,000 game IDs that I want, right? So I'm like requesting 2,000 games. And if you think about it, like, like imagine like Google searching 2,000 games, that's gonna take a shit ton of time. Right, you don't want to do that. Um, but if you had twenty people, like Google search on, you know, like the first twenty, the second twenty, third twenty, all that stuff, it'll go much quicker. Uh, and in uh, in Python, you can do that with multiprocessing, and it's just a syntax thing. But that's how you would multiprocess it uh, and get all those game data. Okay, ten minutes in. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so at this point we have our data, which which is cool and all. But but as you've seen before, there's like a, a lot of data. Like ideally, I want like a table, right? I want a table of where each row is in the data, and then each row has like multiple columns for the the offensive uh, the offensive team, defensive team, when the shot was taken, or the goal was taken, etc. But to do that, we first need to explore. We first need to understand what that data is. Um, and a very neat way to like understand this 
you could scroll through it and try to understand the data, but that's going to take way too much time. But a neat way is to just inspect element um, your UI. So if you go to inspect element uh, network, I apologize, this is like a very fancy lingo, but it's what's required for API requests. Just refresh the page um, and then go to preview, click preview. Um, this is all on the GitHub, so if you don't know what I'm doing, like it's there. This is basically this data that you see in colors is all the same data that's on board. That's just it's like falling in place. So the data we want is under live data, plays, and then all plays. And then right here we have uh, 361 lists. So all of those are just like separate events. And I, I can show you what they are. So I'll just go to like a random one. Okay, so this, this so the 110 list is a list shot event. So just a shot of like four losers or any bunch of them. Um, it's like that. Let me try to find a shot data. And that's period off, period end. This one is shot blocked. I'm looking right here. Uh, this one's all shot blocked. Okay, I'm trying to look for a specific event. It's called shot. Uh, and then I'm also looking for the goal event. Hmm, can't seem to find it. Okay, this is also shot blocked. Okay, here, there's this is shot. So this event, so the 15th event in the game was Mark. Um, and this is a dictionary, right? It has a lot of information that you could want about the show. So for example, like if you want to know where the shot was taken, like it, it occurred at this X and Y point on time at this global server. Like if you want to know at what time it occurred, um, if you click on the about, it has like a um, period time, like when in the period it occurred and how long. So I, I hope I, I conveyed to you like my message that there's just a lot of information, a lot of good information you can get out of this. Um, so the next step is like, how do we extract this data? Um, it's quite simple because this whole thing is a dictionary, right? So you index it like a dictionary. Wait, why did it remove that? Let me pull it back. So let me go back. So right here, if I want to get the await thing right there, if I want to get the await team, um, right here, I index into the game data. So I click down on the game data, and then I index into teams. So teams, and then away, it's away, and then I get the name. And then where's the name? Right here. So the Seattle Clapton. So that's how I get the away team. Um, and that's how I get the home team as well. So home team. Okay, the Knights. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm basically, so what I'm doing is with each event in that giant list, like you saw those 300 something events. I'm first looking to see, I'm just indexing it in the way I just showed you to first see if it was a shot or a goal. If it is a shot or goal, I proceed. If it's not a shot or goal, I just ignore it. Um, and that's basically what this code is doing. Uh, I could walk you through it, but I don't think we have the time. But like, just take my word for it right up top. I'm just basically indexing to get the X and Y coordinates for each uh, for each event of each shot uh, or goal event. Uh, I'm giving the offensive team one to uh, the shot that you scored, and then I'm giving the time and the time and the. Uh, 
basically the time you have to put that attention. And then in the other I just <coughs> so where like in that case like the shot will go in that small order between the time to the and the time to the period right after you the shot you have a bunch of other good information that you could have. So hopefully that makes at least some sense, at least right now. I hope you guys are at least able to follow along. All right, cool. I, I see some nodding, uh, nodding heads. Um, right, so I iterate through all the games and all the events, and what I will end up with is this table. So, again, I iterate through all the events. There is a question. I usually guys shine gold. I get um, four of them shine gold. The end is one for me what happened. They all have three to match the shot. In terms of seeing what appeared to happen, and it's like yeah, self explanatory. Now, that table that you see in native Python, Baba, that table is called a data frame. So it's a special data structure. Just like how a list holds like a list of things, how it may show a data frame holds tabular information. And the you you import um you import the data frame using Panda. So you just import the Panda as the And it's very handy to have this data frame because you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. You can let's say you want to get the mean of you can basically and just put that for me. Um, and so on. Okay, so now that we have all our data in a tabular form, like we can really start messing around with it. So, like the first thing I want to do is I want to rank staters based on uh, their score pattern. So basically, the viral goals divided by the number of shots. So I, uh, so this is like all panda stuff. So I, I apologize like, if you don't understand it, but I'll just quickly like describe what this game is like. Uh, I basically get all the unique players in the field, and then for each player, I find uh, find all the shots and goals that they took with this on the field. Uh, this is basically a filter. So you know how our table has all the different players. This applies a filter where it basically removes all the other players except the four that I'm interested in. And um, from that, I get all the shots and goals. And then I find a channel random. Because right now, the event column, it, it just says shot or goal. But I want it to be a number. Where I want it to be like a zero for a shot, one for a goal. It makes it easy because now all I have to do is just add a whole. To know how many goals. And then, in order to know how many attempts that this player took to score, I just need to get the one. So, what I have to do is. I basically end up getting the number of goals on the score, so I find out what it is. And then I'm not going to take uh, based on the money. And then I can just divide the both of them and then just add it to a list. And then if I do that for every player, and then make a bar graph out of it, uh, and uh, the Panda's bar graph is pretty simple. You do that, and then you get like a pretty neat bar graph. The person with the highest scoring average is the goals. You guys know the numbers? I don't know the numbers. Usually, it would be, but imagine like the rookie that scored. Like his first season in the NFL, or not the NFL, he scored 20 points, which is like pretty insane considering like it was his first year. So, like his scoring average was like, uh, or last year, the scoring average was like, like one in every four shots he took to score. That's that's ridiculous. So, I think like the Canadians. 
Yeah. 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 Canadians. Now? I mean, I think I think it's really cool. I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know that before. Now I'll just do the same thing, except for all the teams. Um so I filtered through all the teams, look at all the shots they attempted, and then look at all the scores, uh, all the goals they took, and then we divide the two numbers, and then just plot it again. And then here, oh wait. Yeah, it's the same code except instead of like the players, it's the teams. Um and then here the blues pop up out of nowhere. I would say something like the but like I guess not. I guess it's I guess it's uh, the blues that have the highest scoring average, which which is kind of which is kind of cool. Um, but like again, when you condense everything to like one number, it can be deceptive. Ah, that's boss. It can be kind of deceptive. Um, so what, what is this? So what I'm going to do instead, instead of like dividing those two numbers and just collapsing them together, we can just take away the information. I just want to see why that one. This, uh, this is Shots table, I think it's team. Or we'll just do it to me. I'm just trying to see where. So before I put labels on something, I just want to take a guess on where the number of blues show up. So like remember the blues um I found had the highest scoring average. So in this plot where uh, I find the scores taken uh shots taken which scores are being reduced. There's no one that's I you look you look like you know top right. Top right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Wait, why does it pop up? It's, uh, it's the highest goals and. Um, yeah, 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 that's exactly it. Yeah. Um, again, I made this plot before with the with the plot dot scatter. If you don't know pandas, I that won't make sense to you. But uh, yeah, did you even get plot in pandas? What? Yeah, so this is a pandas data frame, right? So you just do dot plot dot scatter and it outputs a map of lib plot. Huh. Right? It's pretty handy. Um, but yeah. Anyway, to put labels on it. This uh, this is like what you just did. Map dot lib is like a well basically there's a function where you can have certain formats. That's what I did. Just did a really cool way. And uh, you end up with with this. So the top right is the Florida County. Do you guys have a favorite? New York Rangers. Thank you. Villa Hill. Alright. I'm upset. The Bruins get my favorite team and they have like a terrible average. Like such so shot in goals. It's like it's a well, yeah, I think that's a cool visualization just to see how well that's what it is. How much time do I have? I have 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So now we have, since we have like a table of all the shots, all the X and Y coordinates, we can go a step further. We can just plot it on my plot lid. Um again, if you want to know how to do that, uh if you like just learn how to just learn math lib, it'll honestly probably take you an hour. And then you can just come back to this code and it's pretty it's honestly like it's just super simple code if you know how to use math lib. Um but first uh, what I'll do is I'm going to extract the x and y coordinate uh, for uh, eventually the x and y coordinates where it is in the 
and we don't like that, do what it is, we'll like help and visualize like defensive like problems, defensive like errors or anything. And the thing like if if like for whatever reason people can just score more on that than on the right, then there's definitely something going on there, right? So that was my reason for doing it. If you want to know how I did it, it it's a simple filter with pandas. Um, again, it's like a really simple code where you just need to know how pandas works to understand it. So like once you learn how once you know how pandas works, like that's all super easy. Um, right. Oh yeah, and about the coordinates. So the coordinates, like this is a good example. So the coordinates they give you is like let's say this is like zero, right? The center point is zero zero. The top is forty two point five. The right is a hundred. On the other side, it's negative one hundred and one. So I can plot it. I can plot all the points. But like it would make no sense, right? I would I would rather just see like this half uh, of the range. It would just make everything easier for the others and all that extra stuff. So like what I want to do, basically like. If all the coordinates on this one, just like pull them all, rotate it 100 degrees, and pop it on this side. Make sense? I guess you know. How do you do that? But let's say you have a bunch of coordinates, right? Here and here. When you take the coordinates here, what do you want to do with them? All right, we're, we're playing on the first slide. If you multiply the x by negative one, you have it completely this way. But if you multiply the y by negative one, like so, so like all the all the points here are ones on the other side, because I want to rotate it one of these degrees. That makes sense, right? Yeah. Well, like if I plug it by multiplying x by negative one, that's fair. But I also need to put the x axis. Does that make sense? But, but here's the problem. If I multiply y by negative one, the whole one's on this side because I want to flip it. But you also flip this side when you multiply y by negative one. Check to see x is less than zero. And um, the x is not in x. Yeah, that's exactly right. You guys understand what I'm saying? All right, cool. Um, again, in pandas, it's quite simple to do. So like df.x is all the x-coordinates, and I'm just looking to see all, where all the x-coordinates are left to zero. So what does this give me? It gives me a... So it gives me a 1 wherever x-coordinates are less than 0, and then a 0 wherever x is greater than 0. It's kind of dangerous, so this is what it is. And then I'll find a one point filter so that I think x is less than zero gives negative one, and then x is greater than minus one. So I have a bunch of numbers, but I end up just basically doing what he said uh, with one line of hand. <coughs> and then once I have like the filtered coordinates, I can just plot them, and then I get this. Do you get someone trying to make sense out of what? They're close to the goal. Like the yeah. concentrated shots. That's my that's my yeah. Most of the most of the goals are like very low. Like a little bit to the left. Right? I guess uh, so. Yeah, that's true. But my point was like that's a terrible chance. Like if you still at home somewhere. Like no one will know where the graph is, or no one will know where the goal is. No one will know where, you know, the playoff area is, and all that stuff. So, like, ideally, what you want to do is like you want to overlay like a image of, of the ring beneath the graph. That sounds super complicated, and it kind of is. <laughs> um, like, so like I'm right here. There's there's a package in Python. Basically, taking a Like a language that map.node, the graphing package, can understand. Um, 
And then I'm basically putting that image right underneath the graph. So right here, this scatter plot right here is what you've seen before. And then this I am show, which is image show, is basically the image that I converted previously. And then when you run the code, you end up with this, which is a much, much better way of visualizing 3D models. So right here, you can like, it's much, it's much easier to realize for people to work on. For and whether or not people score on. So I was just, so hopefully that just makes intuitive sense, right? And I was just, you know, just, I, I was just using a for loop, just trying to like plot out where um, other, like other um, scoring on what I'm doing. And I came across Panthers, which I thought was really interesting. So this is, this is the this is the this is points. Again, just to reiterate what you see here, it's all the coordinates where people end up scoring. And I think it's interesting because, like, sure, there's a lot of like you know points right here. A lot of people scoring right here, but there's like a good chunk that just ended up scoring towards the left. And like, I don't know if you guys know things on that. Like, I tried googling because I thought this was curious, and I googled quite a bit. See why people end up scoring more on the left side than on the right. But kind of like, I mean, I like try try finding an answer at home. Um, but if you do, I would love to know. Maybe like the I mean, yeah. I mean, but the thing is, like the two big like not necessarily like strictly assigned to right or left. Like they, you know what I mean. Um, like let's say let's say like right one is left one is right. You you would assume that most of the shots are like really good right one, right? But if you look at the data, that's not the case. Like they shoot from everywhere. <laughs> um so like I would assume like that's the case with the fence and see it's like it's really interesting. Um yes sir. Maybe the goalie deflections like off of a shot oh, rebound so more so to the left side. That's fair. Wait, is it's like a right handed, left handed thing for goalies? I have no idea. So like is is it a thing where like goalies are much better at blocking the right side than on the left side? Well you can just on the antenna if you go right and so why you can play on the antennas. Well I mean the white that's what it is. It's only have to blow so the whole one has to be so it's a dominant antenna. So but that's not the case. This is literally only the case of points. Like all the other, all the other teams, they were like normal, right? Like what you've seen before, like right? the even I don't know, maybe the penguin goal is weird. I don't know. You know what year this was? The last year. Well, like a couple of years ago, like it was really bad at seeing shots to his ball. So <laughs> like going back. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Maybe he got like the calm or whatever the hell it's called. Um, and then I'm just gonna end it off with one final thing. Uh, and then that leaves like 10 minutes or something like that. Um, so right here, I uh, plotted all the points where other teams have scored on the space. But we can kind of do the other way. We can do like a way. Look to see where players when they're scoring goals on for the other team, on the offensive, you guys say what team, whatever. And like, I don't know who this guy is. How do you say his name? Ovechkin. How do you say it? Ovechkin. Ovechkin. It's not supposed to be an R there. I don't know why there's an R. Um, okay. <laughs> Ovechkin. Um, so I ended up plotting where he takes the shots. So this is last year. This is where he took all the And most of the shots are on the left hand side. Now, according to people who are more well versed with hockey, apparently that's common sense. I looked at it and I'm like, well, that's insane. Like, is that common sense? You guys are like, okay, common sense. Okay. I mean, it's still cool how the data reflects it now, right? Like, it shows like this guy's clearly the left hand. He takes most of his goals to the left side. But, like, again, as I said previously, for like other, like, you know, big thing, like, 
from the book than it is. That's really not the case. It's interesting how Phil Wetchkin, like he's really falling on the left side. It's because when they're on the power line, mm -hmm. he's a righty, so he shouldn't have crossed his body. And he just sits there the whole time and he just does one more push, one spot. Oh, really? The whole time, yeah. Oh, so he just stands there? Yeah. And they like to give him one time as well as shoot it from one. Oh, that would make a lot of sense. Okay, so it's not that he's just really strong on uh, like one hand on the side. It just it's it just the way he plays. Since he's a righty, he's able to get the puck and shoot it out the door. Gotcha. In the same direction. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, see, I don't I don't watch the game things too much. Um but yeah, I think that's cool. And then like if you look to see where he is going. And yeah. That's all I had. How do you score from behind the goal? The that's, wrap that's, fair. that's where he is. So I guess I, I mean I, I mean that's fair. Also, I think there got some random points. Is that the last one? Well, I'm just assuming that there's like some of the language. Or is it like a hit the ball and kind of just touch his muscle and skate? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. oh yeah no yeah that's it. I was I, I just thought it would be like you know some lag in the machinery, but you know that's also valid. Um, yeah, that's all I had. You guys got questions? I apologize. I so he said intermediate. I didn't know what intermediate meant in his language, uh, so I just included non-binary handles. Uh, but like the non-binary handles, we'll just just take a look at it. So we can see the policy. If you know, if you are interested in this stuff. It's not take an hour. It'll probably take me an hour or two to just learn it. And I just come back to it all the code around you and all the Yeah, just click one, 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 and you get basically what you're saying. Raise your hand if you learn something. Yeah, raise your hand if you learn something. Okay. Yes. Okay, I did my job. I did my job. Cool. Uh, you guys have any questions today? Um, yeah. Cool. How do you get like the consistency to show up on top of the for equation like this? What is the symbol is that? On the to show that gets down from beta. This one? Yeah. The shot against him from beta, what is it? So what was this measure again? What was the shot The point from the shot over there. So so each of these like plus signs is um Basically, the only scoring a successful goal, and and like I by the equation, are you talking about? Yeah, you the grid. Flipping the grid. So the only equation here is flipping the grid. All right. Also, like here, let me take you back for a bit. All right, there's a lot of sides. So right here. Right here. Okay. Is on the defensive end, so you can't use the defensive end. So, some guy, this guy, going to the defensive end, attempted a goal. He shot the center for the for the first time. Well, like, where the guy shot it was from this board, and this is the other one. So, like, I have a bunch of coordinates on this. There's no coordinates on it. I just pulled it from the API, and I just got it from the API. And the only equation was um, as he said, basically flipping the field around so that you can have a better. Anything else? I really question, but uh, I was following one of the stuff you put on GitHub. Uh -huh. It looks like the half, uh, the half rank. Oh, is it? Okay, I'll just run everything. Oh, I apologize. I will upload that. Thanks for running that out. But did everything else run? Um, oh. Yeah, I, I did I did have to, I kind of, I had to like make some modifications because for some reason we were threading that wasn't working. So I just my system I had to make it not multi threaded and okay. definitely downloaded stuff for 100 games. Okay, also, um, I mean, the whole thing is that we have. But you know, it says multiplicity got pool and there's a 20. So that's a 20 course. So I ran this on the server 
that has like 40 days close. So like if you're gonna do it definitely that's not how it's gonna go. So like how that how it's not And I think I need to take it okay. to the two. All right, sorry. Wait, wait. Are there people on um on WebEx that have questions? Oh wait, there's a good amount of people on WebEx. Okay, yeah. Uh, do you want to click on this? It's just like, uh, it's just the one store all over there. So like, we have to get the shit and get some. Something like that. So, oh, but that's just a giant distinction. They don't just let you just slow the button into like that. Way. So like they have, uh, both the concepts are getting on themselves and they're just getting back there and it's like, in this case, it's still in 2000. And then I'm just one of them. So, it's not going to happen. I can just pull up the cards and start with it. John, yes. Absolutely. Hopefully, it runs. If it doesn't run, just send me a thing. I'll make the first one. And I will be sure to upload the image. Yeah, I think I think three more minutes and then that's my time. Thank you. Thanks.